Welcome to another Fast Tip video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make your access forms seem to load faster by using a timer event. And I say seem to load faster because sometimes there's not a lot you can do to actually make it load faster if it's got calculations or records to read. But we can make the user experience better by making the form seem to load faster. Now, yes, this is a developer fast tip, so you need a little bit of VBA experience under your belt if you don't know VBA and you want to learn how to program. But watch my intro to VBA video first. It'll teach you everything you need to know in about 20 minutes. Now, this is a trick that I use when I've got a main menu or some other form. It's got a bunch of calculations that it has to perform when it loads. I show some ideas for things like this in my dashboard form video. You could do a sales summary, you can load up some charts, all kinds of stuff. You got a form that loads up and it does some stuff before it gives the user some information. So let's say, for example, on your main menu form, you've got a field where you want to display what your monthly sales are every time your form loads. Now, if you're just working with a single user database and it's just on your computer and you don't have that much data, yeah, it probably loads up really fast. But let's say you've got a networked database, like a lot of people do, and all of your data is on a server, okay, and you're pulling down a whole month's worth, maybe you got 10,000, 20,000 records that have to come across the wire, and that calculation can take, even sometimes 5, 10 seconds, can seem like an eternity when you're waiting for a form to load, right? And if that calculation's in your form's load event or your on-open event, it's going to seem like that form is just not loading it's stuck the database might look like it's frozen to someone who doesn't know better so it'd be nice if we could have the form appear and then maybe say a, you know calculating or something wait please wait while that data is crunching okay so how do we do that well let's go to design view and let's let's create the problem first let's say this is our uh, month to date sales here okay and i'll rename this guy to uh, MTD sales. And let's get rid of that control source. And let's change the format to currency. Okay. Now this could be anything in here. This could be a D lookup. This could be a bunch of action queries running in the background to, you know, sometimes if I have a big report that I'm generating, I'll, I'll run a few action queries to, to append some data into a temporary table and then do a bunch of crunching. So all kinds of stuff could be happening behind the scenes. And let's say we put that in our on load event or our on open event. And yes, I realize you could just make this the control source if it's a simple calculation, like a D sum or something. But a lot of times you got more stuff that has to happen before you can just do a simple calculation. Okay. So you put those things in your on load event. Okay. So right here, let's just cheat and say MTD sales equals 50,000. Okay. Save it and then close it and now when that form opens boom there's your thing now if it's just a local calculation if it's fast there you go but maybe lots of stuff has to happen before you get to that number okay let's say you're pulling down a whole bunch of records from across the network you got to get them into a temporary table you got to scrub them you got to change some stuff you got to do this do that whatever it's not just a simple little lookup so what we're going to do is let's let's cheat let's pretend that uh, we've got like a five second delay in here. And to do that, I'm going to use my little sleep seconds function. If you're not familiar with my sleep seconds function, go watch this video. I show you how to make a timer function that can make your, your, your code pause. So you want to wait three seconds, five seconds to do something. That's what this function does. And you'll find links to all this stuff down below in the description below the video window. Anyway, so let's say right here, we're going to say sleep seconds and then we'll just do a three second timer okay just three seconds that's simulating the database having to do something right get a bunch of records calculate some some totals all that stuff so save that close it now when i open up this form watch click wait 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 see and it takes three seconds for that form now that's just three seconds i've had queries and stuff that have taken like 20 seconds to load before that's unbearable you think that your database is frozen so how do we get around that problem? What we're going to do is we're going to use the forms timer event. Now, if you don't know what the timer event is, 
Go watch my reminder pop-up video. I teach you all about the timer event, how to use the forms timer event to wait a certain number of seconds before something happens. Okay, for example, real quick, uh, if you go into the events, if you come down here to the timer interval, that's the number of milliseconds before this thing kicks off. So if you put in here, like, let's say 3,000, that's 3,000 milliseconds or three seconds. And you can put your on timer event in here to do something. Okay, let's say in here, I'm going to beep. So every three seconds, this form is going to beep. Ready? Save it, close it, and then open it up. And there's our, our three second pause, right? We should get a beep in three seconds here. There it is. You hear it? Yep, there it is. Okay, every three seconds. All right, I'm going to stop that. But we don't want a three second pause. So let's go back here. You got to go back into the main menu, design view. We don't want to open it. It'll, it'll start running again. Okay, let's go back to the timer interval. We'll just get rid of that. Put it back to zero. And we'll come into here. All right, here's my form timer event. Now, what you want to do is this. You want to not have a timer event. You want to have the form load event set the timer interval to something really s small, like, like 100 milliseconds, 10th of a second. So what's going to happen is the form load event is going to say, hey, timer, in 100 milliseconds, you go ahead and run my startup event. And then stop yourself so that you don't run again. You don't want it to run every 100 milliseconds just once. But you need a little tiny bit of a delay there so the form loads displays itself, and then passes control off to the timer event 100 milliseconds later. Remember, to the computer, 100 milliseconds is like forever, right? So we're going to load up the form, display, okay, show all the stuff, show, you know, a please wait message if you want to, okay, and then 100 milliseconds later, pass control to the form timer event, which does your startup stuff. So here's what we're going to do. Let's take that form load event, cut that out of there, Put that in the timer event. Now, when the form loads, we're going to say me dot timer interval. This guy equals 100 milliseconds. That's it. Okay, so the form is going to load. And it's going to display itself. And then in 100 milliseconds, this guy runs. Now, the first thing you want to do here is stop the timer from running again. So you're going to say me dot timer interval equals zero. That stops it. Then go do your stuff. So it'll run once when the form loads. Okay. And if you want to down here, you can put something else. Like if you want to, even though this is a currency, you could still put a message in there like waiting. You could still say something like this. You could say, um, you could say MTD um, sales equals calculating. Or something like that. If you put text in there, it'll still work. Okay. Then it'll sleep that three seconds, then display the amount. And this again is pretending that it's doing your calculations here. Okay. Save that. Come back over here. Close the form. Now you're ready. Click. It displays. You see calculating. And then there's your 50,000. See how that worked? In fact, if you want to, you can even do something like this. You could say MTD sales dot back color equals. BB yellow or whatever. Do your calculating. And you might also want to throw in a me dot repaint in there that says it forces it to repaint the screen immediately. It, re it just refreshes all the control. I don't want to say refresh because it's not the same as a me dot refresh, which is also different from me dot requery. <laughs> me dot repaint just says redraw the form. Okay. Then wait three seconds. Then set it to that. And then say MTD sales dot back color equals VB white. Okay. And then save it. And now you're ready. All right, here we go. The form's going to load now. Ready? Click calculating. And then there's your 50,000. See that? That's kind of neat, right? And if you got a bunch of these, like I did here in my little screenshot, you got, you know, week to date sales, month to date, year to date. You know, this one will be yellow and say calculating while it's doing its thing. And then it'll come down here calculating and it'll come down here and calculating. All right, you can do as many of these as you want to. Now, I've got the same problem also happens with 
uh, continuous forms, these guys that load lots and lots of records. If you've got a customer list that's got to load 20,000 customer records, yes, I know it only loads pages at a time that's not displayed on the screen, but even so, if you're pulling lots of records down over the network, these can still take forever to load, especially if that is based on a query because Access has to pull down all the records and then chew through the query and then display the right records. So you can do the same trick when you're loading records into a continuous form. You can display a little message down the bottom that says, please wait, loading, whatever. Load these in the background while the form is displayed and then display the records. Just like this guy back here. See, it'll load up the shell of the form with no records in it. It'll say loading, please wait. And you can even make that flash if you want to. Right? I got a video on flashing text that also uses the timer event. But there's a trick with continuous forms to get it to display the records properly. And I will cover that in the extended cut for the members. Yes, once in a while, the fast tips have an extended cut. <laughs> I'll show you how to load up a continuous form with no records in it. Show the loading please wait sign load those records in the background, and then properly display them. So that's going to be covered in the extended cut for the members, silver members, and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. But that is your fast tip for today. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry. These free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.